Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Commanding General, Brigadier General Jason E. Kelly, and the Post Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Eric Oakes, welcome to the United States Army Training Center and Fort Jackson for the retirement review of one soldier and graduate graduation of companies A, B, C, D, and E from the 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, 165th Infantry Brigade. Please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Carl Chiara. Let us pray. O oh God, we bow down before you and thank you once again for this privilege. You have been with us and these great soldiers, especially during their rigorous training. You have granted them success. Today is the day to be crowned and celebrate their achievement with their loved ones. May you bless us all during this great and memorable occasion. Our soldiers, their families, our leaders, and our great nation. As they embark on their careers and start a new chapter in life, Give them a sense of purpose. Remind them and all of us that you have a good plan for them and that he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Help them to be strong and courageous. May no weapon fashioned against them prosper. Enable them to execute their duties with honor, integrity, and wisdom. Let them be great ambassadors of the Rock Force, the United States Army, and the United States of America. May the Rock Force continue to take the beach. We pray in the name of the one who is the creator and sustainer of all. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The purpose of today's ceremony is to recognize the commitment of the men and women you see here who have chosen to serve their country as soldiers. This review is the last official formation in the careers of one lifelong soldier and for our newest soldiers. Not everyone successfully completes this difficult period of training. Far fewer are able to accept the challenges and difficulties that come with the life of a career soldier but those in formation today represent disciplined, motivated, physically fit soldiers who exemplify the Army's seven core values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They are imbued with the warrior ethos and display the tenets of putting the mission first, never accepting defeat, and never quitting, and never leaving behind a fallen comrade. This is an important day and these soldiers can take great pride in their accomplishments. To the parents, families, and friends of these soldiers, Fort Jackson extends a very warm and sincere welcome. We are justifiably proud of our retirees' lifelong dedication to our nation and are truly honored that the next generation standing on this field have chosen to join our ranks. Please direct your attention to the left of the formation the units marching today from your left to right are the 282nd Army Band under the direction of Sergeant First Class Sean Cup, graduating soldiers from Company A, B, the Battalion Color Guard, and graduating soldiers from Company C, D, and E. Identified by their distinctive headgear are the drill sergeants. These dedicated non-commissioned officers form the backbone of the Army's training center system selected based on professional competence, leadership ability, and years of service. These men and women undergo intensive training to earn the right to wear their distinctive hat and insignia. With the drill sergeant hat goes the important responsibility of molding civilian men and women into soldiers. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Major Michelle Y. Walker, who serves as the executive officer for the 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, she and the battalion staff are positioned on the field. The reviewing officer for today's graduation is the commander of the 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, 
Lieutenant Colonel Randolph J. Lemming II. On his left is the Command Sergeant Major, Jose D. Torres, the Battalion's Senior Non-Commissioned Officer, Master Trainer, and Principal Advisor to the Commander. The commander of troops will now bring forward the colors and person to be honored. Competence and commitment are the hallmarks of professionalism. The soldiers and drill sergeants coming forward will be recognized for their excellence in training and duty performance and serve as examples to all. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem. It is appropriate for soldiers in uniform and all armed force veterans to salute the American flag. We ask our civilian guests to please remove your headgear and place your right hand over your heart as our national anthem is played. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness the retirement of one lifelong soldier. All soldiers begin their journey by graduating from basic combat training. Over the years, there have been changes to how the Army conducts basic training. However, many things remain the same. It was during basic training that this soldier was first introduced to the Army values. It is where he learned the importance of teamwork and that the Army truly is a family. That sense of team and Army family is still embedded in what is done here today. Over 24 years ago, this soldier took the same oath to defend this nation that your loved ones on the field have taken. We salute these great soldiers as they pass the torch of freedom along to the newest generation of soldiers. Your loved ones standing on the field today. A certificate of appreciation from the President of the United States will be presented to the retiree today. It reads, I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of our grateful nation for your contribution of honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during critical times in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of the military service. I trust that in the coming years you will maintain an active interest in the armed forces and the purpose for which you served. 
Those who follow in your footsteps will draw inspiration from your commitment, dedication, and sacrifices made to ensure the protection of our American freedoms. My best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. A certificate of retirement from the Chief of Staff, United States Army, is also presented to the retiree today for his dedicated service to our nation. At this time, Brigadier General Kelly and Command Sergeant Major Oaks will recognize today's retiree for his service to the United States Army. Sergeant First Class George Fernandez, having served honorably for 24 years of service, is placed on the retirement list effective 31 March 2024. Sergeant First Class Fernandez entered active duty in Oakland, California, and will reside in Kansas City, Missouri upon retirement. His fondest professional achievement was working with 7th Special Forces Group in El Salvador, standing up anti-terrorist task force against MS-13. The nation salutes Fernandez George Sergeant First Class United States Army retired. Please join me in a round of applause for our retiree and his family. Although newly retired, he will always be a part of our Army family. The soldiers most responsible for the training of these soldiers are the drill sergeants who are carefully selected by the Department of the Army. The drill sergeant campaign hat and badge have been a stoic symbol of professionalism and pride since 1962. At this time, the drill sergeant of the cycle from Delta Company, 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, Drill Sergeant Harley Kirkland will recite the Drill Sergeant Creed. We ask that all Drill Sergeants, past and present, please stand for the reciting of the Drill Sergeant Creed. I am a Drill Sergeant. I will assist each individual in their efforts to become a highly motivated, well-disciplined, physically and mentally fit soldier capable of defeating any enemy on today's modern battlefield. I would still pride in all I train, pride itself, in the Army and in country. I would insist that each soldier meets and maintains the Army standards of military bearing and courtesy, consistent with the highest traditions of the U.S. Army. I will lead by example, never requiring a soldier to attempt any task I would not do myself. But first, last, and always, I am an American soldier, sworn to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. I am a drill sergeant. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Fleming, Command Sergeant Major Torres will now present the awards. The Outstanding Drill Sergeant of the Cycle for 334 Infantry Battalion is Drill Sergeant Harley M. Kirkland from Chattanooga, Tennessee. <laughs> the
The soldier leader of the cycle for Alpha Company is private first class Elisa A. Garcia Irizarry from San Juan, Puerto Rico. The soldier of the cycle for Alpha Company is Private First Class Zachary B. Ward from Weaverville, California. The soldier leader of the cycle for Bravo Company is Specialist Reginald J. Washington from Houston, Texas. The soldier of the cycle for Bravo Company is Private Alea Cruz from San Benito, Texas. The soldier leader of the cycle for Charlie Company is Private Duan T. Grubbs from Jackson, Tennessee. The soldier of the cycle for Charlie Company is Private Jeffrey Cornajo from Raleigh, North Carolina. The soldier leader of the cycle for Delta Company is Private First Class Elijah Baker from Wasila, Alaska. The soldier of the cycle for Delta Company is Private Jonathan Robertson from West Orange, New Jersey. The soldier leader of the cycle for Echo Company is Private Jackson C. Pareda from Gainesville, Georgia. The soldier of the cycle for Echo Company is Private Alexander M. Tiger from Marine City, Michigan. The NCO of the cycle for 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment is Sergeant First Class Dustin Croy from Kalamazoo, Michigan. The soldier of the cycle for 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment is Sergeant Camila Taylor from Fayetteville, North Carolina. The civilian of the cycle for 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment is Mr. Gary McCracken from Ontario, California. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Randolph J. Fleming II. Good morning, Rockhurst. Hey, y'all are louder on family day. Let me hear it a little bit louder. Good morning, Rockhurst family. Yeah, that's better. You got something to be excited about today. So I'd like to say good morning to everyone and thank you for joining us today. Uh, before I start, I'd like to welcome our distinguished guests, Brigadier General Kelly, Command Sergeant Major Oates, Colonel Mount, Command Sergeant Major Blyler, Colonel Hutton, Mr. and Mrs. Barr, and Mr. Sykes. Thank you for joining us today. And to the family and friends of the 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, Rock Force Soldiers, Welcome to Fort Jackson and Hilton Field.
we understand that many of you have traveled long distances or watching remotely, and we appreciate your efforts to be here today. And we want to sincerely thank you for your support. You've given your soldier through their journey. Please give yourselves a round of applause. I would also like to thank the military veterans and retirees present with us today. Can I, can I ask all the military retirees and veterans to please stand? It's a fact, it's a fact that we would not be here today celebrating this great achievement if it were not for your sacrifices and dedication to defending this great nation. So we thank you for your service. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the 282nd Army Band. You always add a touch of class to any occasion, and uh, we truly appreciate the support, so let's give them a round of applause here. Now, a little bit about your soldiers and their journey. You know, I always enjoy talking to soldiers and their families about their accomplishments, but today, today's a special day. It's special because we get to publicly recognize and welcome our newest soldiers into your army. It's special because it's their opportunity to showcase to you their story of perseverance, teamwork, and the sacrifices they made to get on this field today. Ten weeks ago, we welcomed over 1,200 new trainees from entry stations from across the country. And with the incredible support of dedicated staff and civilian employees from across Fort Jackson, we put your loved ones through their paces. We tested their grit. We tested their discipline. We showed them what it meant to be a member of a team. And as a result, you have who are standing in front of you today, an impressive group of 1,156 transformed volunteers who can proudly proclaim they are disciplined, trained, and fit United States Army soldiers. Throughout this training, these soldiers accomplished some incredible feats and met the standard for every training requirement we put in front of them. They overcame fear, experienced shared hardship, and showed resiliency in the face of challenges. To give you an idea of their accomplishments, let me share a few of them with you. Your loved ones rappelled down a 40-foot tower, completed multiple rigorous obstacle courses, executed 13 ranges where they shot thousands of rounds and ultimately qualified on their weapon. They threw hand grenades. They low brought the length of a football field in sand at night under heavy machine gun fire. Completed multiple field training exercises like the hammer, anvil, and the forge where they patrolled individually over 65 miles under heavy rucksacks through the muggy South Carolina summer heat. And this is just a small sample of their accomplishments. Ladies and gentlemen, the men and women standing in formation today did everything we asked of them. It is without a doubt each soldier standing here has earned and deserves the title of American soldier. This formation is, is also as American as you can get. They come from all over the country, from small towns like Casey, Wyoming, Dexter, Minnesota. They come from our large cities like Los Angeles and Washington, DC. In fact, they've joined us from across the globe, from countries like Sierra Leone, Philippines, Guyana, 
France, Mongolia. The youngest is 17 and the oldest is 42. 33 have associates, 37 have bachelors, and six have masters. Some even left their jobs where they served as police officers, firemen, and educators, while many have served previously in the Air Force, Marines, and Navy. And finally, I think this one is, uh, this one is extra special. For 62 of the soldiers standing on the field today, today marks another high point in their lives. Today marks the day they took their oath to become American citizens. <laughs> Families and friends, this is your United States Army, and let's give them a round of applause. group. However, there's a little more to the story. In addition to the support from their families at home, none of this would have been possible without the coaching, mentoring, and guidance from an incredible group of specially trained and carefully selected cadre. And I'm talking about our Rock Force Drill Sergeants. For the last 10 weeks, these soldiers were with your soldiers day in, day in and day out, walking through the rain, through the heat, standing side by side your soldier through their tough times and their joys. They were their role models, and they were their inspiration, and let's give them a round of applause. to the soldiers of 334 Infantry. I want to congratulate you on your accomplishment. You have entered an institution full of tradition and pride. The journey you're embarking on will be both rewarding and challenging. From this day forward, you are now charged with protecting your fellow Americans' freedoms, upholding the Army's traditions, and living the Army values. This may sound daunting, but remember, you've proven you've got what it takes. Now let me leave you with a few thoughts as you start your new journey. First, continue to build on your legacy of accomplishment. This isn't the end. There's an old saying that says, to whom much is given, much will be required.